It is Monday, April 29th, and the Splash Zone is back in your life. I'm Matt Modai, and I have three NBA player props for you guys to lock in for tonight's NBA betting slate. We got three games on tap for tonight's NBA playoff schedule, and I'm going to have one pick in each game. Of course, before we can get into today's picks, we got to do a recap from yesterday, which was brutal. It was one of the worst days that I've had this entire NBA season. I gave out five picks on the YouTube channel, and I gave out one more on Twitter and to my dub club. Unfortunately, I only got one of those six plays to cash, so we went one and five yesterday down 3.91 units. Friday and Saturday were filled with just brutal beats and hooks. To be honest, yesterday was just filled with bad reads. That's kind of just what it came down to. I had Siakam over 24 and a half points. He barely looked for a shot. I had Tyrese Maxey over 25 and a half points. He was stuck on 20 basically the entire fourth quarter. PJ Washington went one of four from deep. I had him making two three-pointers and then I had James Harden under two and a half made three-pointers. He made four in the first half and those were all four he made the entire game. The only thing that we were able to cash was Anthony Edwards over five and a half assists. So that was nice for a plus 140 cash. But overall, just a very, very bad weekend, a very bad three stretch, uh, three day stretch that we are having here. Of course, that comes on the heels of going seven and one combined on Wednesday and Thursday. That's just always the nature of sports betting. That's how it goes. I wasn't the smartest person alive on Wednesday and Thursday, and I wasn't the dumbest person alive this weekend either. That's just kind of how the, the, uh, the plays go, how sports betting goes, especially in the playoffs. But hopefully we can turn it around today. That brings our entire profit on the entire season. We are now up 109 units about uh, down. We, are, we were up over the 115 unit mark of profit. Obviously, that is no longer the case after this rough uh, weekend that we, were, that we had. But up 109 units on the season isn't terrible. And since the regular season ended, we're still up a little bit over a unit as well. So it's not like we haven't had any success in the play-in slash the playoffs. It's just been brutal recently. It feels a lot worse than it is. Up a little bit over a unit in the play-in slash playoffs. So at least that, again, we're not down since the regular season ended, but the success isn't nearly as good as it was. So again, hopefully we can turn that around today. If you are not already, I would appreciate it if you could like the video, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff does help me out a ton. And then as I mentioned, I do have a dub club where I send plays out. It's only five bucks a month and it gets you the same plays that you see here on YouTube and on Twitter. The logic being I send everything out first thing to my dub club. So it gets sent directly to your phone via text, email, or telegram, and you're able to lock plays in before the odds change. Because a lot of times I'll, I'll lock in a play, and then by the time I record a video, edit it, and post it to YouTube, the odds are different. So the Dub Club kind of combats that, gets you everything early. Five bucks a month, but if you'd rather just wait for the YouTube video, get it for free. Totally cool with me. I just like to give people the option. But that's enough of that. We can get into today's bangers. Let's hope we can put this weekend behind us, splash around, and get wet, starting in the Thunder versus Pelicans game, I'm taking Herb Jones over one and a half made three pointers, minus 140 odds at bet 365. Now, yes, minus 140 is probably the steepest I've played this entire season. I admittedly don't love the minus 140 odds, but I do think that it's a really good play for him to make two three pointers. So I'm willing to accept the juice in this one. I'm also putting a half unit on him to make three plus made three pointers as well. That's at plus 240 odds at Fandle. I went, the, I went with Herb Jones in game two, reminded myself of what it, what it was like to win a bet. And he cashed for us making four three pointers in that game. Now, Herb Jones did miss it in game three, but looking at the numbers and diving into the box score of game three, that makes me want to go right back to this play in game four. In game three, he was one of six. But the more important number is legitimately every single one of those six three-point attempts, every single one was considered wide open. That's the logic of why we were on him in game two. And the Thunder played him the exact same way in game three. He made four three-pointers in game two. Majority of all, I mean, basically all those shots were considered wide open. They still left him wide open in game three. And he went one of six from deep. He didn't have a great game. That just makes me confident going right back to him in game four. It's the, almost the same logic from games one and two, right? Game one, he went two of eight from deep. I saw that and he did make two, but I saw that and said, okay, he didn't have a sh good shooting game. I love the eight attempts. He's probably going to turn around and have a better shooting game in game two, because that's just the nature of the business. He turned that around, shot four of seven from deep. Then in game three, exactly what I mentioned, he was one of six. 
which, which is exactly why we are on him today. The Thunder, they're going to play him the same exact way they played him in the regular season, the same exact way they played him through three games in the playoffs so far. They're just going to leave him wide open. And Herb Jones has turned himself into a good enough shooter that he can make wide open three-point attempts. And I'm confident that he's going to keep firing away in game four as well, kind of similar to games one, uh, from game one to game two. In six games against the Pelicans, he's made two or more three-pointers in four of those six games that he went two of three in the regular season, and now he's two of three in the playoffs so far. And if you look at the regular season, he shot 45% on wide open three-pointers. So again, he's turned himself into a pretty good shooter, confident that he's going to turn around after a rough game three, hopefully cash this out for us and our ladder play for game four. That's our first play. Next up, Celtics versus Heat game. I'm taking Jason Tatum over two and a half made three-pointers, minus one at 25 odds at DraftKings. So another three-point prop, another fade of recent results here. And another situation, I actually am going to go ahead and ladder this and uh, put a half unit on him to make four plus made three-pointers at plus 210 odds at bet 365. As I mentioned, we're fading recent results here. And I admit, this one is going to feel pretty gross. He has shot horribly, basically all series, specifically from deep. So we're going to go ahead and label this our Pepto play of the day. So it's going to feel a little bit scary backing Tatum with how bad he's been shooting. But this is the exact type of play that I absolutely love and what had a lot of success in the regular season and a lot of success in last year's playoffs as well. Now it's been rough the past couple days. It doesn't scare me off completely from a strategy that has a sample size, a large sample size of working. Game one, Jason Tatum shot one of eight from deep. In game two, he was two of six. And then in game three, he was two of seven. We've seen this happen with Jason Tatum. Also, we've seen it happen in the playoffs as well. He's a very streaky shooter, but what I love are those attempts, right? Six, eight, seven. Those are pretty good three-point attempts, and I love the fact that he's continuing to shoot, and the guess here is that Jason Tatum is going to end up having a blow-up game, either this game or next game, where he shoots like six of eight from three-point range or something like that. Now, I do admit, if you look at his track record in the playoffs, specifically against the Heat, that track record isn't great going back to the seven game series last year and then the three games so far this year. But if you look at the regular season against the Heat, he made three or more three pointers in two of the three games and his attempts were good in those three games as well, 10, seven, and six. And then I know that this is a different team, but we also saw this in the seven game playoff series against the Sixers last year as well. Jason Tatum had multiple cold stretches of games in a row. Then he blew up in the fourth quarter of game six and then he blew up in game seven, making uh, scoring 50 points and making six three-pointers. The guess here is that we're going to see something like that in store for Jason Tatum. Hopefully it's tonight after shooting a combined five for 21. In the first three games, I'm ready to, back, to buy in on Jason Tatum, turning this three-point percentage around, having a good shooting game tonight. And he could get up another, he could have another bad shooting game, get up another 10 attempts. As long as he makes three, we're good to go. Or hopefully four, cashing out our ladder play as our second play. Last up, third and final pick of the video, Lakers versus Nuggets game. I'm taking D'Angelo Russell under 15 and a half points, minus 109 odds at Bet Rivers. It's been a very, very interesting series for D'Angelo Russell, who has just flip-flopped. I mean, he is the, uh, the ultimate flip-flop player in these four games of the playoffs. He's gone from poorly to great in every other game. Game one, he was terrible. He scored 13 points. But more importantly, he shot six of 20 from the field and one of nine from deep. Then he bounced back in game two. And we actually bet on him in game two as well. He bounced back going eight of 16 from the field, but more importantly, seven of 11 from three point range. I had him to make three. He made that, he doubled that. He made seven. And then game three, one of the worst games a human being has ever played. He legitimately did not score a single point. He literally scored zero points. He was 0 of seven from the field and 0 of six from deep, he was benched in that game. He only played 41, or excuse me, he only played 25 minutes. Then he bounced back in game four. He scored 21 points. He was eight of 15 from the field, four of eight from deep, and played 41 minutes. So it's it's like an every other thing for D'Angelo Russell. But the reason why I'm on his under tonight is not because I think he's incapable of playing well two days in a row, but the Nuggets all year were a tough matchup for point guards, and they've been a tough matchup for D'Angelo Russell specifically as well. So Yes, I'm not saying again that he can't play well two games in a row. More so just, just fading outlier shooting performances, right? 
you know, he's 7 of 11 from game two. Of course, that was going to come down in game three. Now, I didn't think he wasn't going to score at all, but it was only natural for that to come down. I should have been on his under, but I wasn't. That's on me. And then the same thing after game four, right? He scored 21 points, 8 of 15 from the field, 4 of 8 from deep. Those are numbers that I want to fade in a matchup that D'Angelo Russell has specifically struggled against. Uh, especially last year, he was terrible against the Nuggets. I will admit he's been a little bit better. This year, he went over in one of two regular season games, and now he's gone over in two of four playoff games. But after, again, a good kind of outlier shooting performance in game four, I think the Nuggets come back, shut them down in game five. The Nuggets win, cover the spread as well as my official prediction there. And that's all we got. Three bangers for you guys to lock in. Let's hope we can turn things around after a brutal stretch of days from Friday to Sunday. Turns out the weekend wasn't always our friend, even though we did have... I mean, the regular season, we had a lot of good weekends. It was not the case this past weekend. Let's hope we can turn that around today. Appreciate everybody who has been rocking with me through this cold streak. Let's get through it together. Remember to like the video, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out uh, my Dub Club if you're interested. Link to that in the description of the video as well as the pinned comment. Appreciate everybody for watching and have a good one.